Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Well, look what is back. Cuba Aliados. That's a name you probably remember over the years. It's an old brand. It's been around. But uh, last year, this is a long story, so try to keep up because it's kind of, there's a lot going on here. Last year, the Van de Morale Maleri family, I'm sorry, I'm butchering that, a uh, family of cigars, the owner of Jay Cortez and Oliva Cigar Company, purchased the rights to the Cuba Aliadas Puri, Purus Indias and Roli trademarks, 300 and brands made popular by the late Rolando Ray Sr. They purchased the rights, but the cigars aren't being made by the Oliva Company. Instead, it will be relaunched with two distinct lines made by two other companies. The regular production line uh, made by Julio Iora of JRE Tobacco Company and the uh, other line is made by Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. of VP Carrillo in a limited re uh, edition release, which is what we will be reviewing today. Uh, this cigar is the Toro 6x52. There's your density. retail for $14.50 a cigar or $2.90 for a box of 20. So they kept more or less the Cuba Aliados uh, logo pretty much. And there's a little limited edition type uh, cabinet edition is actually what it's called at the foot. Um, the decision to, to release the two blends was done as a nod to Ray's travels after leaving Cuba in 1970 as he sought to find soil and growing conditions similar to his homeland of Cuba. And the journey led him into Honduras in 1990. Told you there's a lot going on. So basically, uh, the, the company that owns Oliva bought the rights, but they've given the production to JRE, Eora, and to uh, E.P. Carrillo. So we're going to look at the E.P. Carrillo version. Oh, and there is another version actually made by A.J. Fernandez for internet type stores, uh, big stores. So it's out there too. Haven't had that one. Only this one. I'm going to look at this one today. I got these in small batch. The Cuba Aliados by Ernesto Perez Carrillo Toro. We have a little band at the foot here to remove this one. And those are usually not glued on great. There's what it is. Cabinet selection. All right. So has a little rustic look to it, I think. It's not a flawless looking wrapper, but I don't know. Draw is good. A little touch of firmness, just like I personally like it. But uh, it's just a little rustic looking. I don't know if that makes a huge difference. First flavor is like a little a little grouping, a little combination, a little soup mixture of light citrus, citrus peel, and cedar and brown sugar. It's like you get all that, all those flavors are really mixed in a nice little pod. There's even cinnamon in there. I left out cinnamon. Mix all those together in your mind. That's what you have. There is light coffee. 
in quasi light to medium leather. Black pepper at about seven to seven and a half. So it's not too bad. The front end flavors at this point are uh, quite sweet. It sort of reminds me of an uh, apple pie kind of mixture with cinnamon. Uh, I said it reminds, okay? It doesn't taste like an apple pie, but uh, it's nice flavors. Those are nice. It's a nice mix. So let's see what we have at the first third. First third, and uh, flavors are about like I described before. Citrus, citrus peel, cedar, brown sugar, cinnamon, pod. The uh, leather is still there. All right, leather, light black coffee, and earthiness. Earthiness is starting to enter, and it seems to be increasing as I go. At this point, it's not hurting it too bad, but we'll have to watch that earthiness. Medium body. Finish with a, a little citrus and leather. About 50-50. Good lingering black pepper. Cigar at this point is actually very good. I like those front end flavors. I've already said that. I'm ready at 93. I'm uh, a little cautious with that uh, earthiness. So we're going to have to watch it into the second, third. It may not do anything. It may hurt it significantly, but we're going to find out. End of the second third. And suspicion or fear confirmed. The earthiness is increasing. It's really hurting the front end notes. It has some sweetness still, but it's uh, quite earthy. The leather is up. You still have some citrus cedar, light citrus peel, brown sugar, and cinnamon. And you still get that, but you can't get away from the increased earthiness in leather. And then now the black coffee is a little more prominent rather than light. It's just sort of there. Still medium body. Finishes very heavy on leather and hints of citrus and brown sugar. Cigar is still okay, but it took a hit. Uh, the earthiness definitely muffled the flavors from the way they were in the first third. The second third, I'm rating 90. It took a big hit. Ninety's on the line with me, as you know, so the cigar is not terrible. It's just it, it took a definite noticeable hit. Now, will it keep going in this direction? If it does, we're not going to have a very good final third. It could bounce back, and I hope it does. to the end so let's wrap it up well the good news is it did not keep going downhill it made a slight turnaround the earthiness subsided somewhat allowing the sweeter notes to come out the black pepper improved some <clears throat> finishes unchanged good lingering black pepper I think the cigar improved a little. I'm raising it to 91. The fact that the earthiness subsided really did that because the sweeter notes didn't change 
they just were allowed to be noticed a little more. Didn't even get close to back the way it was in the first third, but it's, it, it did improve. And you'll notice that. So your overall score is 91.33. Overall, that is a, the score it deserves. It, it started out pretty good, but it did get earthy and made a modest comeback at the end. So 91.33 should work. So there you have it, the new Cuba Aliadas Toro by Ernesto Perez Carrillo, 91.33.